Today we got growing squash secrets. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hey, thanks for joining the Road by Road Garden Show. I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. And if you've never joined us before, we are a gardening show. We come on every Thursday night, YouTube and Facebook, and we talk all things growing your own food. We're located here in South Georgia Zone 8, and we have a garden supply company called Hoss, and we sell supplies, tools, and seeds, and we try to give people content and good information so you can be successful growing your own food. And it is springtime. Mm. What you got growing, Mama Hoss? Oh, my English peas is up about four inches. I didn't plant none this year. I got five minutes before I thought about it. Uh, my beets are up. My mm -hmm. calendula's are up. My strawberries are turning. Trying to keep the birds off the strawberries. So the other day, <laughs> we've always had problems with birds and strawberries. Really the only problem we have. So, Mom Hall's come up with this great idea to paint. No, it wouldn't mind. A lot of our viewers told me to do it. Just paint. <laughs> paint rocks like strawberries and put them in your strawberry patch. It's not working. It's not working. No, they're eating. So, now I resorted to a bunch of those flags. Okay, trying to herd them off that yeah, way. Yeah. yeah. I've had a little bit of problems with birds in mine as well, so. I had this big old strawberry turning, and they ate it. Mm. But we got a good, a good many strawberry rocks for sale yeah. if anybody needs them. Potatoes to planted. You planted your potatoes yet? I'm, I'm planting them today. 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 Yeah. Mm, a little late on strawberry. I'm eating my potatoes. Speaking of potatoes, we still got a few varieties ready. Anybody that needs any out there? I normally don't plant mine to the end of February. Mine makes well. Brother Wayne, that's my buddy, sent me a picture. His is already coming through the ground. Oh, wow. He planted his on February 14th. We've had good potato weather this year so far. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're getting in the mood to getting everything swinging around here. We've got sunflowers in the greenhouse, mm -hmm. zinnias in the greenhouse, tomatoes in the greenhouse, peppers. Greenhouse is full. So, folks, if you've not planted your melons, your watermelons, your cantaloupes, or things like that in the greenhouse, it's time to get them in there because it's going to take you about four weeks to grow them off and you're going to have them ready to plant outside around the 1st of April, which is perfect. Yeah. So, I'm going to start some seedless. I need to do that today. Yeah, I got me a flat of yellow dog growing. And as what we're going to talk about today, I'm going to probably plant me some, start me some winter squash. In the greenhouse? Not me. I've done that before. Uh, yeah, not summer squash. Winter, winter squash. squash. Yep. All right, so we got a couple plugs. Plugs. We got plugs, y'all. Still got plugs. We're only shipping on Monday and Tuesdays, but you can place your order any day. We did ship a few last week on Wednesdays. If it's close by, I may ship them on Wednesdays, but if it's very far away, we're going to ship them on uh, Tuesdays, Monday and Tuesdays. Now, we ship these things primarily UPS priority mail because we try to get them to you quick because plugs don't have a long shelf life. So, we got brassicas ready now. We got collards. We got cabbage. We kale. got kale, broccoli, and cauliflower. We got five different brassicas ready right now. And in a couple of weeks, keep your fingers crossed, we're going to have some tomatoes and pepper plugs. Tomatoes. Mayors. So we begin the plugs this year. You can place your order anytime, but we will only ship the first part of the week. So if you do order, say, some plugs and some seeds or some tools, we're going to hold that order to accommodate the plugs and ship those the first part of the week before you can get them out. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. All right, we got a new seed this week, and boy, I've been mm -hmm. waiting on this one for a while. See that right there? Did you know anything about this, Mama Hoss? I knew it was coming. All right, folks. We got the Hulsinator Pickly Cucumber finally in stock. So we already have a slicer. And yep. This is a pickler. This is a pickler. Let me tell you what's so special about this one. Okay. This is a monoecious type. This one right here is ideal for trellising and for a long harvest season. So if you don't like what they call that yellow belly on your cucumber, you know where it lays on the ground? Mm -hmm. You can plant these on a the trellis. These ah. are... These do well for trellising. You can plant more trellis that grow up and they'll be green all over. Now this, this particular variety right here is a blocky type pickle. It has a dark green color to it. It's very productive. It's a good, strong plant. 
one of the main things about it, folks, is the disease resistant on these right here. It is a very disease resistant variety. And you're going to be successful growing this. And that, it being disease resistant, is going to lend itself to a longest winter, so a longer harvest winter, because the life cycle is going to live longer. It is powdery mildew resistant, and it is a great one right there. And monoecious means that, it, it, that it's going to, it's going to, it's going to produce longer over a longer period of time. So it's important that you take care of that vine and baby that vine. And you don't step on it, tromps on it. That's the reason the trellis works mm, itself. That'd be good effect. for my fermented dill pickles. Yeah. So if somebody's got, it would be, but somebody's got a small garden that they really running out of room on, they don't have much room and they got the trellis up. This one right here's Yeah. I'll get you two T-posts and get that <coughs> small Hortanova yeah. trellis that we Perfect. sell. Perfect. Days to maturity, 50 days to maturity. So wow. that's the time that you put it in the ground where there's seed or plant. So they're going to make real quick there. You plant them now and you can be harvesting these things before the 1st of June. Hossinator pickle cucumber. We've been waiting on that one for a while. All right, a little stock update, Mama Hoss. Got some beans in stock. Got some beans in stock. We got pretty much most of our beans in stock. Now, one thing that we were really stressed about was the Christmas lima bean. And if you don't know what that is, that's that big speckled lima bean that runs up. It's a runner. You need to trellis it also. Very, very popular. We got an email here a while back. They was going to cut our order because there was a, uh, a shortage. Luckily, we got our full order in. We was ecstatic when that happened. So we got a good supply of that in. It's always touchy from year to year. That's the reason I, I do encourage people to save their own seed on some of these varieties because you never know when we're going to have a crop failure on those. Uh, Kentucky Wonder Bean, got it in. Love, a lot of people love that one. Peas, let's talk about peas for a minute. <clears throat> I believe I'm losing my voice. We got some peas in. However, we're still short or have not got in the Mississippis. And you know what I'm talking about, the Mississippi purple hole and all those Mississippi peas Zipper. and the zippers. We're still waiting on those to come in any day now. They could get here. We're waiting on that fresh crop. When they back up to the door, we'll know they're here and we'll send out an email that we got them. Because I know a lot of you guys are Customer waiting. servers will do a happy Ooh, dance. Man, they are. A lot of people waiting on those zippers. They hate telling people, no, we don't have them. Yep. Yep. All right, folks, we're talking about squash. All right, so summer squash, winter squash, what's the difference? Summer, I mean, winter squash has a thicker skin and they will uh, hold up longer. Mm -hmm. So a summer squash, we actually harvest as an immature. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, we actually harvest as an immature. Now, a summer squash, I mean, excuse me, a winter squash, we harvest those as a mature mature fruit. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's got a little hard shell on it by the Hard top. shell, the texture's different, mm -hmm. the flavor's a little bit different, and they actually do better with your cooking because they hold up well. Yeah. Uh, most people grow some type of summer squash, and I don't want summer squash, I want your yellow squash, your zucchinis, very popular. A lot of people grow those. Don't a lot of people grow the winter squash and winter squash is a little misleading with the name winter uh, You actually grow it in the spring or the summer, but it will Store on into the winter time and for some reason other years ago people called them winter squash hmm. I'm not sure why Another uh, another name they use down here in the south is called them hard squash. Yeah So did you know like the butternut squash? it has um less carbs than some of the summer squash. It has less carbs than a sweet potato. I didn't know that. So it's really good for diabetics because it's got a low, what we call a low glycemic index. Glycemic? You're throwing some big words mm -hmm. on me. Glycemic. You got something yellow on your nose. Probably some pollen or something. Yeah, I do look like pollen. It is pollen. <laughs> Pollen's everywhere here. <laughs> They're also rich in potassium. Mm-hmm. And what we've got right here is some winter squash. This is some delicata that you put up last year. No, actually, delicata. Yeah. 2021, excuse me, two years ago. Yeah. It was up here on the shelf. I actually had to go it. Can I taste some of it? Mm -hmm. Do you cook this or is it already cooked? It's, well, it's canned, so it's cooked. You can eat it right out of the jar. So you would use this primarily for soups or stuff like that? 
It's got a good seal on it. Yes, it's got a good seal on it. You got it? I got it. You could use it anything that you would use a fresh squash for. But you can't can yeah. summer squash. That's still pretty good. No, you cannot. Because it won't keep its texture. Right. So we're going to talk about today the different species mm -hmm. of squash. And the reason we're going to do this is because it's interesting and it's beneficial for you to know the different species or types of squash. That way you can understand the way to grow it or maybe the way to store it. And maybe it would help you make a determination on which one you need to grow. So first thing we're going to do here is we're going to put up this graph right here and I'm going to show you what we're talking about. You see what we got circled there on all of our product pages? We have that circled. And we're going to talk about the three different types or species of squash today. Now these are probably about five overall, but the three that is the most popular is Pepo, Machada, and Maxima. And you find that information on each squash, whether it be summer squash or winter squash, right there where we got that circle there. So that's some information that's on our product page that you probably didn't know what it meant, but maybe after today you will know what it means. That means the type of squash or the species it is. And there's some differences in those type species. Now, all of your summer squash that we eat, the weed is immature, such as your yellow crook neck, yellow straight neck, or zucchinis, or of the pepo species. Some also of our hard squash or our winter squash are of the pepo as well. The only difference in the two really and truly is we eat the summer squash as immatures. So when you say immatures, if we let them mature, they would be like a hard squash? They would be a hard squash. Now they're not very good or desirable as a hard squash, but they would be a hard squash because it would have that hard shell on there. Mm -hmm. So let's put this up right here. Let's talk about the different ones right there. So we got Pepo, of course, we've already said that's our summer squash, but it's also those sunburst or scallop type squash that we have. You know those that we have like uh, like the sunburst? Mm -hmm. And the lime color, the eight ball. Yep, the, yep. all those fall the into the Pepo. Also, the sweeter types, as we just tasted right here in this jar right here, such as the delicata, and some of your pumpkins, such as Blazed Harvest or Jack Mustang, are also in the Pepo category there. Now, the Pepos, to me, are probably my favorite winter squash to grow. And the reason is they're normally sweeter. Mm -hmm. you know, the Delicatas have always been a favorite of ours, haven't they? Mm -hmm. What's, What's the, the other one? Yeah, that's what's the other one. We got sweet dumpling. Sweet dumpling. Sweet dumpling. We love it. Normally speaking, the smaller the fruit on the winter squash, there are the pepo type. Mm -hmm. uh, now these normally have more of a bush compact vine than the other two out there. So if you're growing in a raised bed environment, you want to go with one that's of the pepo species because it's not going to get out of hand with you and it's going to stay within its boundaries a lot better. Uh, days of maturity on a lot of these Pepo types is around 100 days. Now, when it comes to storage, you really can't store these Pepos. And I'm talking about the winter squash. They don't store very long, 30 days at the most, pretty much. And you, they do not need any curing. So as soon as they're ready, you harvest them, you can go ahead and consume them. They're ready to eat. And you get maybe 30 days, the most out of it, if you put them in a dark, dry spot so that they, uh, they hold well. That's pretty much it. What? What? Maybe we kept one a little bit longer than that down there in the pool house one we time. We had one up here for a long time. Yeah, and it was okay. But generally speaking, about 30 days on that right there. The Pepos, like I said, have the highest sugar content, normally the most sweeter ones. Uh, so if you're growing in raised beds, you definitely want to go that route. I grew the um, sweet dumpling in my raised beds. Mm -hmm. did really well. Yep. All right, so let's move on to the next one, which is the Machada type. Now these are some of the pumpkins as well, such as your Long Island cheese, your Seminole, and your butternut squash. Now this particular one has a one of those climbing vines right there. It climbs, and you don't want to give it plenty of room. Uh, days of maturity, it varies anywhere from 95 to 110 days. Now you will get storage from these right here. These are the ones that's going to store really well for you. Now our chart here says four to six months. We've kept these things almost close to a year sometimes if they got a good place to store them. 
These ones are the most heat tolerant of all the winter squash out there. And look here, if you've got fine bore problems, these are the ones you want to grow. These. Now, do you plant these winter squash at the same time, like right now when you plant your summer? Yes, you can. Vine borer, this Machada is the one you want to plant because this is the one that's the most resistant to vine borer. So what I do is I plant them in the springtime and then I'll go ahead and plant some more for the fall crop. Now which one do you use as a trap? That's the Hubbard. That is the Maximum, which is the next ones we're going to talk about. Oh, okay. I'm getting ahead of you here. You're getting ahead of me a little bit here. So when we plant our spring crop, now we get a lot bigger harvest off our spring crop. That one jumped off of you, didn't <laughs> Then we do our fall crop, but we normally got plenty of room in the garden, and we like to grow some to have in the fall of the year. Now people up north, say Ohio, Kentucky, up in there, they grow just one crop during the year, and then they come off, and then they store into the fall. They have them. Coming off somewhere around October, uh, September, October, maybe even the end of August. So uh, that works out well for them because most of the time you think of these things are fall type crops to consume mm -hmm. around the holiday time. However, we love them any time of the year. All right, the next one we got here is Maxima. Now this is, this is also some of the pumpkins. The pumpkin you may be familiar with is a porcelain doll. Prize winner, that's that big one. Is this all pumpkins? or Nope, just, just some pumpkins. That's the weird thing about these. Some pumpkins fall in all three of these categories right here. Hmm. And uh, Cinderella pumpkin as well is a Maxima type pumpkin. As far as winter squash, North Georgia candy roaster, which is one that we carry here that I really like. Um, that is a Maxima type. Red Curie is a... Uh, Maxima type, we were on that a lot of time. And then you have your different types of Hubbard types. Now those are the ones you are talking about will make the good traps. Mm -hmm. The Heavenly Hubbard. Yep, Heavenly Hubbard makes a good trap crop for all kind of insects here, squash bugs mainly. Now these good for trellising these vines as well. So if you're gonna grow something up on a cow panel or some type of trellis, you want to grow with these Maximus types. They're not squash. too big for a trellis. They no, don't. they do pretty good. They got a very healthy vine. I mean, if you grow, you can't, of course, you can't grow the prize winner pumpkin on a trellis because it's too big. But some of your small ones, like a North Georgia candy roaster, it would do wonderful mm. on a trellis. So you got to pick a smaller type squash there, but it would do fine on a trellis right there. Now, normally speaking, you have to let these cure out. The Maxima. The Maxima and the Machete. Both of those you need to let cure out anywhere from these all kind of Is that information. Machete or Machata? Machata. Okay. You say Machete, Machata. You said Machete. Machete, Machata. Machete, Machata, okay, Maxima. Machata. You need to let those cure anywhere from four to five weeks. Put them in a cool, dark place and they cure out. And those carbs convert sugars there and they store. Then you can consume them after they, quit eating that. After they cure out. Now, most of these will store, there again, it says four to six months. However, the red curry, you can eat immediately after. I mean, when you when you pick it, you can eat it. It's one of the few of the maxima that you can eat when you harvest it right there. I grew the red curry years ago, and I, it, was, it was a good one. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorites. I like it. Um, days of maturity, same as the rest of them, 95 to 110 days, somewhere there. Now, the maxima, normally speaking, is going to set fewer flowers than most other types of the squash. So you're going to get less fruit because most of this fruit is bigger in size. So just keep that in mind. You're not going to have quite the flower set on this type of squash as you will, say, like on the pepper. And then, you know, they're known for some of their really unique flavors. And I go back and I think about the red curry. I think about some of the Hubbard, Blue Hubbard squash. It has that real unique meaty type flavor to them. So those are very good. So maybe folks, that will help you understand a little bit more about growing winter squash. And I highly encourage you, if you've never grown winter squash before, to give them a try. Question for you, is winter squash a vegetable? Uh, technically, no. Good answer. It would be a fruit. For culinary purposes. They call it a vegetable. It's called a vegetable, yep. but technically it's That's a correct. fruit. You go, Mama Hawks. Trivia on me today. Yeah, a little trivia. Yep. 
So look at that and then understand, let's go back to this graph right here. Let's go back to this right here real quick. You see that right there? You can see on every product page on our website, it gives you the idea of which one of these types it is. And then you can see from that type what characteristics that plant has. And it helps give you an idea. Is this chart on our website? It's not, but we're trying to get one together. Okay. We're working on that. Gives you an idea. Do you need to grow it in raised beds? How much room do you need? Now this Moschetta Maximus types, probably plant those on four foot row spaces, maybe a little bit further apart than would you Pepo. Pepo, I normally plant those on 36 inches, two foot apart. So I plant those closer. And these other ones, you need to let them out a little bit further because they're going to have such running vines on them. What's your favorite way for me to cook? Oh man, my favorite way is to take the delicata or the sweet dumpling, split it in half, spoon out the seeds, turn it over, put olive oil on it, and put bacon on it, and season it up good, and roast it in the oven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you? That's the way I like it too. Yep. Bacon, or maybe stuff it with some sausage. Oh yeah. We enjoy them a lot during the uh, late summer and fall. Yep. It's a yeah. real treat for us. I like people. them really better than a sweet potato. I know I do. Yeah, and I love sweet potatoes. Yep. All right, so let's move on to Garden of the Week. Garden Spotlight. So, Carrie Smith from Reeves, Tennessee, Zone 7, sent us these pictures. And she has beans, peas, cucumbers, Christmas lima there beans. There we go with the Christmas limas. Christmas limas are real popular pop there. But. Um, I want you to look at that arbor there. That's mm -hmm. what I want. Yep. Isn't that pretty? Yep. So if you're just going to grow an arbor like that with a winter squash, something like the North Georgia candy roaster would be perfect for that because mm -hmm. the fruit's not real heavy. It's very vining. And she is in Zone 7. Thank you, Carrie, for mm -hmm. sending us those garden pictures. If you want to send yours in under the Hulsh University tab, there's a link where you can email us your garden pictures, and we'll show them on the show. Yep. So the old goat drawing, folks, it's time for that once again. And there's an old goat figurine somewhere here on the set. And if you find the old goat, put comments below where it's at, and we'll do a draw in the following week, give away a prize for whoever found the old goat this week. He and might be looking for, for the Easter eggs, you know? He it's may getting be. getting that time. It's getting that time. So the drawing, the winner this week is Cheryl oh, Mitchell. Oh, Cheryl, she'll be so happy. Yep, there you go, Cheryl. Cheryl, send us your shipping address, cuss serve. I think we have it. At hostools.com. Yeah. All right, Sherry, we'll get you something special sent out. Oh, we're going to send her something special. Yeah, I'm going to send her this Cog Hill Sunflower Collection. Yep. All right. Corny joke. Corny joke. Corny joke. Now, if you don't get this one. I'm not good at getting these corny jokes. I enjoy them, but I don't get them very often. What kind of vegetable do you get when the elephant walks through your garden? Squish. <laughs> Did you say my name? No, I did, but I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I finally got one. Squash. Squash, squish. Squish, squash, squash, squish, squish. Pretty good. Yep. All right, folks, it's getting springtime. We're all enjoying the longer days here, getting out there and getting some things done. Man, it's busy this time of year, isn't it? Busy, busy. Yep. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Days are fixing to get longer. Yep. We'll you have, have more, more time. You have more time to stay out there in the garden. All right, folks, thank you for joining us. we got a special guest on our live this Sunday night. Make sure you join us. So what time is our live? Seven, seven, seven. o'clock Sunday night. We're going to do a live. we got a special guest on there. We're going to be talking about growing sweet corn. So you got to join us in. Thank you so much. And now it's time for you to get outside and get dirty.